Hello everyone, my name is Indranil Guha and I'm one of the co-founders of FinPEG. Today we are going to talk about the FinPEG 1PM monthly cash flow plan. This is an investment strategy that has been developed completely in-house at FinPEG and is meant for investors who seek to generate a steady monthly cash flow from a lump sum investment. Now generating a steady monthly cash flow from a lump sum investment often involves making very difficult choices. On one hand, you have safer options like bank fixed deposits and debt funds. Uh, however, the safety comes at a huge price and that price is absolutely low returns. In fact, the returns that you get on these investment options, net of taxes, is barely enough to cover even inflation. On the other hand, you have the option to invest in top-rated equity mutual funds as per a buy-and-hold approach and generate steady monthly cash flows by setting up systematic monthly withdrawals or SWP from such investments. What is buy and hold? Buy and hold is an investment approach where you invest your investment corpus in a bunch of top-rated equity mutual funds and you hold the investments for a very long period of time, let's say five to 10 years. And the hope and belief is that when you invest your investment corpus for a very long period of time in top-rated equity mutual funds, you will hopefully be able to get out with very good returns in the long term. And this in turn has given rise to another notion that if returns of equity mutual funds in the long term is going to be very, very good, then you can potentially also set up monthly withdrawals from your lump sum investment at a rate substantially higher than that of bank fixed deposits. And then over the long term, you will hopefully be able to get out with, of your investment with at least your principal amount still intact, net of the monthly cash flows. Let's see how valid is this notion. And to examine this notion, we'll take a closer look at this fund called the HDFC Prudence Fund. Why HDFC Prudence Fund? For the simple reason that it has by far been the most popular scheme in the entire Indian mutual fund industry amongst investors who have sought to generate a steady monthly cash flow from a lump sum investment. Now we are not endorsing this fund, nor are we suggesting that it has been the most popular in its category for the right reasons. We are just stating a historical fact that it has been a very, very popular fund. Now let's see, had you invested an amount of 10 lakh rupees into this fund for a period of let's say six years, and you would have used this fund for generating a steady monthly cash flow, what would have been the performance of such an investment historically? What you see on your screen right now is a very long list of six year periods in history. Let's say you invested 10 lakh rupees at the beginning of each of these six year periods in the HDFC Prudence Fund. And during the course of the next six years, you withdrew at a rate of 10% of the investment amount every year. So 10% of 10 lakhs is one lakh per year, which translates to 8,333 rupees every month. So what this effectively means is you invested 10 lakh rupees at the beginning of each of these six year periods in the HDFC Prudence Fund and over the next six years you withdrew 8,333 rupees every month for the next six years. What is the terminal value you would have been left with at the end of six years? That is what you see on your screen right now. So as you can see, in the median case, had you invested 10 lakh rupees at the beginning of a six year cycle and taken out a monthly withdrawal of 8,333 rupees per month for the next six years, your terminal value in the median case at the end of six years would have been 15.52 lakhs. Now that's phenomenal for a median case performance. Just imagine what's, uh, what's happening here. You invested 10 lakh rupees over the next six years, you took out withdrawals at a rate of 10% per annum and yet you ended up with a terminal value which is one and a half times your original investment. So this is the median case performance. Uh, that by definition means that during some of the six year periods, the terminal value has been higher than 15 and a half lakhs. During some of the six year periods, the terminal value has been less than 15 and a half lakhs. So for example, the best performance of this strategy was between the periods October 2001 and October 2007. As, and as you can see, had, during this time, had you invested 10 lakh rupees at the beginning of six years and taken out a monthly cash flow of 8,333 per month over the next six years, you would have ended up with a staggering 63.2 lakhs at the end of six years in October of 2007. However, if you are unlucky enough to invest in this fund for a six year period between January 2008 and January 2014, 
During this period, a 10 lakh rupee investment would have ended up in 5.96 lakhs after monthly cash flow payouts. So as you can see, in the worst case scenario, you wouldn't have managed to preserve your principal amount originally invested. And why did this happen? This happened because your six year period started at a time which coincided with the beginning of a very steep crash in the Nifty. As we all know, between January 2008 and October 2008, the Nifty corrected a staggering 60%. And this is the risk that you carry when you invest as per a buy and hold approach in top rated equity mutual funds. If let's say you invest in a top rated fund for the next six years with the purpose of generating a monthly cash flow and your six year investment cycle happens to start at a time which coincides with another big correction in the nifty, you also potentially run the risk of negative returns which would almost certainly mean that over the course of your six year investment horizon, you will probably not be able to preserve the original amount that you invested at the beginning of the investment cycle. Now how do you address this risk? At Finpeg, we designed the Finpeg 1PM monthly cash flow plan to address this very risk. Now, unlike a buy and hold investment approach where you invest in a bunch of top rated equity mutual funds in a timing agnostic manner, in the Finpeg 1PM monthly cash flow plan, we in fact try to actively time your investments into the equity markets. Now, when I say we try to actively time your investments into the equity markets, I'm not trying to suggest that we have some kind of a crystal ball which tells us how the markets are likely to behave in the days and months to come. All we are trying to say is that we track a bunch of key market parameters which have historically been very, very accurate indicators for deciding whether the markets are overvalued or undervalued by historical standards. And accordingly, we try to gauge whether the markets are likely to go up or down in the time going forward. And if you are able to do that, there's a very good chance that we'll actually be able to time your investments into the equity markets very, very optimally. Let's see how this is done and let's take a closer look at the specific parameters that we look at as we try to time your investments into the equity markets. The first parameter that we look at is called the price to earnings ratio of the Nifty or the PE ratio of the Nifty. Now, If you do not know what the PE ratio means, we have put links in the description section through which you can read up more about the PE ratio. What you see on your screen right now is a chart which tracks the movement of the Nifty over the last 20 years. What you also see in the upper half of your screen right now is a chart which tracks the movement of the PE ratio of the Nifty over the last 20 years. As you can see, the average PE ratio of the Nifty over the last 20 years has been 20.01. The highest that the PE ratio of the Nifty has gone to in the last 20 years is 29.9. The lowest that the PE ratio of the Nifty has ever gone to in the last 20 years has been 10.68. What these two charts also show you is that whenever the P ratio of the Nifty goes to levels significantly higher than its long term average, those are times when the Nifty is considered to be very, very expensive. And incidentally, those are also the times when the Nifty has experienced some of its biggest corrections. So as, as you can see, when the P ratio of the Nifty went above 28 for the first time in the history of the Nifty back in February of 2000, what followed over the next one and a half years was a correction of 51% in the Nifty. The second time the P ratio of the Nifty went above 28 was back in January of 2008 and what followed over the next 10 months was a correction of 60% in the Nifty. By the same logic, when the P ratio of the Nifty drops to levels significantly lower than its long term average, those are times when the Nifty is of course very very cheap and incidentally those are also the times after which the Nifty has rallied very very strongly. So for example, when the P ratio of the Nifty dropped to a low of 12.3 back in September of 2001, what followed over the next 6 years 3 months was this gigantic rally which took the Nifty up from about 850 points in September 2001 to almost 6300 points in January of 2008. In terms of annualized returns, that translates to almost 37% return per annum. The next time the P ratio of the Nifty dropped to these super low levels was in October of 2008, when the P ratio of the Nifty dropped to an all time low of 10.68. And what we have had since then is this rally which has been on for last 11 years and during this time, the Nifty has gone up from 2500 points back in October of 2008 to its present level of more than 12,000 points. 
So as you can see, there is a very high risk of a correction in the Nifty whenever the P ratio of the Nifty goes to very, very high levels. And whenever the P ratio of the Nifty drops to very, very low levels, there is a very strong probability that the Nifty will go up. And this historical behavior of the Nifty can be used to very effectively time our investments into equity markets. All you need to do is whenever the P ratio of the Nifty shoots to very, very high levels, during such times, you aggressively reduce the weightage of equity funds in your portfolio and move all the investments into safer investments like debt funds and whenever the P ratio of the nifty drops to very very low levels those are times when of course the nifty is now very very cheap during such times you aggressively increase the weightage of equity funds in your portfolio let's see how this can be incorporated in your lump sum investment so in a buy and hold investment approach, you invest your total investment corpus in a bunch of top rated equity mutual funds and for the entire duration of the investment, all the investments stay in only the equity funds at all times. Instead of doing that, what we propose to do is to actively churn your portfolio between equity funds and debt funds during the course of the investment cycle based on the prevailing P/E ratio of the Nifty. To be more specific, what we are proposing to do is during times when the P ratio of the Nifty drops to 15 or below, we propose to move the entire investment corpus into equity funds. And as the P ratio of the Nifty starts to go up, the Nifty is now of course becoming more and more expensive, we propose to reduce the weightage of equity funds in your portfolio and increase the weightage of debt funds in your portfolio. And finally, if and when the P ratio of the Nifty goes above 25, now the Nifty is of course very, very expensive we propose to reduce the weightage of equity funds during such times to zero and move the entire investment during such times to a debt fund for the purpose of this illustration the equity fund that we have selected is the hdfc prudence fund and the debt fund that we have selected is the hdfc liquid fund let's see what's the impact of this on an investment of 10 lakh rupees for a period of six years in the HDFC Prudence Fund done with the purpose of generating a steady monthly cash flow for a period of six years in a scenario when you incorporate market timing and dynamic asset allocation. What you see on your screen right now is a long list of six year periods in history. During each of these six year periods, had you invested 10 lakh rupees at the beginning of the investment cycle and through the six year period, had you taken out monthly cash flow payouts at a rate of 10% of the investment amount every year, that's 1 lakh rupees every year, which translates to 8,333 rupees every month. The terminal values that you would have ended up with in each of these six year periods is what you see on your screen right now. As you can see, in the median case, had you invested 10 lakh rupees at the beginning of a six year investment cycle, you would have still ended up with 19.43 lakhs at the end of six years after payouts at the rate of 10% every year. What does it mean? It means you invested 10 lakh rupees and after taking payouts at a rate of 10% per annum, your money still almost doubled and this is still the median case. In the best case, which was uh, between the periods October 2001 and October 2007, a 10 lakh rupee investment after monthly payouts at a rate of 10% per annum over the next six years still helped you generate a terminal value of almost 60 lakh rupees. Even in the worst case, which was during the period February 2010 and February 2016, you would have invested 10 lakh rupees at the beginning of the six year cycle, you would have taken out monthly payouts at the rate of 10% per annum and yet you would have ended up with a terminal value of 10.07 lakhs at the end of six year cycle. So even in the worst case, the original principal amount is still preserved. This is what happens when you incorporate market timing and dynamic asset allocation. Even in the worst case, you are able to protect your principal amount net of monthly cash flows during the six year cycle. Let's quickly compare how do these performance numbers compare with the performance of a traditional buy and hold investment that we examined a little while back. As you can see on your screen right now, uh, in case of a buy and hold investment of 10 lakh rupees, net of monthly payouts at the rate of 10% per annum, at the end of six years, in the median case, you end up with 15.52 lakhs per annum. When you incorporate market timing and dynamic asset allocation, the median case terminal value improves to 19.43 lakhs. The most dramatic improvement can be seen when it comes to the performance of the strategy in the worst case. 
As we saw a little while back, a 10 lakh rupee investment as per the buy and hold approach helps you generate a terminal value of 5.96 lakhs at the end of 6 years net of monthly cash flow payouts. So in the worst case, you are not able to preserve the original principal amount invested. However, when you incorporate market timing and dynamic asset allocation, as you can see in the chart that you can see on your screen right now, even in the worst case, you end up with 10.07 lakhs worth of terminal value. That means even in the worst case, net of monthly cash flow payouts at the end of six years, you are able to preserve the original principal amount invested. Now these are of course historical performance numbers and, and I must reiterate at this stage that uh, one should not conclude that they by any means indicate any kind of indication or assurance of future returns. However, I hope you would agree with me that these numbers do demonstrate how dramatically the performance of a traditional buy and hold lump sum investment can be improved when you incorporate market timing. And here we are incorporating market timing and dynamic asset allocation based on just one parameter, which is, which is the P ratio of the Nifty. Just imagine how much more the performance of this investment can be improved when you incorporate more such parameters other than the P ratio. And that's what we exactly try to do with the FinPEG 1PA monthly cash flow plan. We do not depend on only the P ratio of the Nifty as a criteria for timing our investments into equity markets. We make use of many such other parameters. And why do we do that? We do that because if you are going to depend on only the P ratio of the Nifty to time your investments into equity markets, you're probably going to get it wrong at least some of the times. For example, as we record this video in January of 2020, uh, P ratio of the Nifty has been above 28 for the better part of last two years. And yet in the last two years, we haven't really seen any 50-60% correction as we have seen in the past. What does that tell you? That shows that just because the Nifty has corrected by 50-60% in the past, whenever the P ratio of the Nifty has gone above 28, doesn't necessarily mean that the Nifty will continue to behave in exactly the same fashion going forward as well. And hence, it is imperative that when you are trying to time your investments into equity markets, you do not depend on any one single parameter. Instead, you have a very comprehensive basket of input parameters based on which you time your investments into equity markets. And that's exactly what we do. Uh, when it comes to timing our investments into equity markets as part of the FinPEG 1PM monthly cash flow plan, there are broadly five sets of input parameters that we make use of. And these five sets of input parameters are listed on the screen right now. The first set of input parameters that we look at is related to the valuation of Indian and US markets. So basically what we look at is the PE ratio and the price to book ratio of the Nifty 50 here in India as well as S&P 500 in the US. The second set of input parameters that we look at concerns the government bond yields and corporate bond yields here in India as well as globally. The third set of parameters that we look at covers macroeconomic indicators, basically the GDP growth rate and inflation rates here in India as well as globally. The fourth set of parameters that we look at is related to global economic activity. Now, there's a whole bunch of economic parameters that track global economic activity. The specific parameter that we look at as part of the FinPEG lump sum investment strategy is called the ECRI. Last but not the least, the fifth set of input parameters that we track as part of the FinPEG lump sum investment strategy is the monetary policy of global central banks. To be specific, we look at the monetary policy of the US Federal Reserve, the European Central Bank and the Japanese Central Bank. Now, the last set of input parameters is something that probably requires a little more elaboration. Why is that? As we saw a little while back, when you look at the equity markets through the prism of P ratio of the Nifty, the markets are probably very, very overvalued at this point in time. And that probably means that we should stay out of equity markets as we record this video. However, if you look at the markets through the lens of the monetary policy of global central banks, there is probably a case to be made that there is potential for the Nifty to go up significantly from these levels, despite the fact that the Nifty is already very, very overvalued. And why is that? That is because as we record this video in, in January of 2020, global central banks in general and the Federal Reserve in particular is in, are engaging in a policy called balance sheet expansion. Now, what is balance sheet expansion? So when the US Federal Reserve engages in balance sheet expansion, what is effectively happening is that it starts printing dollars and st starts pushing out these newly printed dollars out into the US financial system. The effect of that is 
total money supply in the US financial system starts to go up. These newly printed dollars start to find their way into the hand of in, hands of investors and investors in turn invest these newly printed dollars back into equity markets and bond markets and as a result it's been historically seen that whenever the Federal Reserve engages in balance sheet expansion you have equity markets and bond markets starting to rally very very strongly. The US dollar of course is a very special currency it is the reserve currency of the world. So when the Fed does money printing, the circulation of these newly printed dollars are not limited only within the US system. In the form of FII flows, these newly printed dollars also find their way into emerging markets including India. So as a result, it has been historically seen that whenever the Fed engages in money printing and balance sheet expansion, you have equity markets from US all the way to India, everything starts going up. And this is something that becomes very, very clear when you look at the chart on your screen right now. As you can see, between January of 2018 and September of 2019, the Federal Reserve Bank of US was actually contracting its balance sheet size. So the balance sheet size of the US Federal Reserve went, went down from four and a half trillion dollars back in January of 2018 all the way down to 3.6 trillion dollars by September of 2019. So that's a reduction of 900 billion dollars. That's the amount of dollar liquidity that was sucked out of the global dollar pool. And after September 2019, the Federal Reserve reversed policy and the size of its balance sheet again started to grow. And as you can see, between September 2019 and January 2020, the size of the US Federal Reserve's balance sheet went up from $3.6 trillion to its present level of about $4 trillion. What has been the impact of this on equity markets here in India? As you can see in this chart, between the period of January 2018 and September 2019, when the Federal Reserve was actually contracting the size of its balance sheet, equity markets here in India had a very, very volatile phase. The Nifty went up many times, but it also came down as many times. Net-net, the returns of the Nifty during this 21-month period was practically zero. However, as soon as the Federal Reserve started to engage in balance sheet expansion and balance sheet started to grow from $3.6 trillion all the way up to $4 trillion, the Nifty immediately had a reversal in trend and what we have had since then is the Nifty rallying very, very strongly by more than 15% since September of 2019. And it's not just the Nifty, you could have picked up any equity market around the world and everything has gone up between 12 to 15%. So as you can see, some of the parameters that we track are indicating that the markets are very expensive and we should possibly sit out of equity markets at this stage, while some of the other parameters that we track are suggesting that there is further room for the equity markets to go up still, despite the fact that equity markets are already very, very overvalued. And this is where our role comes in. We distill these often com conflicting signals emanating from various market parameters that we track and accordingly make an informed choice with respect to what should be the optimal asset allocation for our client portfolios at any given point in time. Before I conclude, I want to briefly talk about how the FinPEG 1PM monthly cash flow plan is actually executed. As we discussed, the FinPEG 1PM monthly cash flow plan is all about continuously churning your investment portfolio between equity funds and debt funds as per a logic that is linked to the five sets of input parameters that govern this investment strategy. So when you are setting up a FinPEG lump sum investment strategy involving three top rated equity mutual funds, what you also need to have in your portfolio are three debt funds corresponding to the three equity funds. So the way this works is that the initial investment corpus has to be first invested in the three debt funds in the portfolio and then the FinPEG lump sum investment strategies investment algorithm takes over and it starts churning your investment corpus between the three debt funds and the three equity funds. The investment algorithm also in parallel starts to provide for a monthly cash flow by way of systematic monthly withdrawals or SWP. I want to highlight at this stage that the FinPEG monthly cash flow plan has been designed to generate a steady monthly cash flow as per the cash flow amount that you have chosen. As part of the FinPEG 1PM monthly cash flow plan, we let you opt for a monthly cash flow of anywhere between half a percent per month to up to 1% per month. 
However, at this stage, I must highlight that the FinPEG 1PM monthly cash flow plan has been designed to generate a steady monthly cash flow at a rate chosen by you, irrespective of the returns being generated by the underlying investment. Hence, whenever the returns generated by the plan falls below the rate at which the monthly payouts are happening, the FinPEG algorithm has to dip into the principal amount to provide for the monthly cash flows, thereby resulting in some amount of principal depletion for some time. Conversely, whenever the returns being generated by the plan exceeds the rate at which the monthly payouts are happening, there is an appreciation in the principal amount invested. Based on the historical simulation of this investment strategy at FinPEG, our endeavor of course is to ensure that by the end of a six year investment cycle, at least the original principal amount that you invested is preserved even after the monthly payouts during the course of the six years. However, past performance cannot be and should not be construed as any kind of guarantee of future performance of the strategy and hence at FinPEG we make no such guarantees implicit or explicit with respect to the principal protection by the end of the six year investment cycle net of monthly payouts. The terminal value of the investment at the end of six year depends on two things. The performance of equity markets during the course of that six years and the rate at which you have chosen to take monthly payouts. Higher is the rate of monthly payouts, lesser with, with the final terminal value and vice versa. And hence it's very, very important that you go through all the scheme related documents and understand the risk properly before you choose to embark on an investment in the FinPEG 1PM monthly cash flow plan. This brings us to the end of the video. Hope you like this video. If you have any questions or clarifications to seek with respect to the FinPEG 1PM monthly cash flow plan, please reach out to us on the phone number and email address mentioned at the end of this video. Thank you very much for watching this video. If you liked our video, please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to press the bell icon because we will be adding new content regularly.